Hi guys, welcome back, and I'm pleased to say this is going to be a nice, very short tutorial on how we're going to actually make these tunnels, position these tunnels using our existing algorithm and be able to traverse them using the first person controller in Unity. Yes, that's right, we're going to take our first look at navigating this maze, so it's very, very exciting. I paused at the end of the last one thinking that this would be quite complicated, but actually it was pretty straightforward. It was more of a uh, an admin task than anything else. If I just show you what I've done with my the prefabs, Obviously we created these different shapes, we created the corner, um, we created the straight and the T-junction and the crossroads. So all I needed to do was create prefabs that mirrored these shapes here for the, um, uh, for the for the basically having the same rotation on them. So corner two you can see has got this 90 rotation. So what I did was I went through them one by one, pulled them back in, made sure they were facing the same direction from the top. Uh, straight down, pointing in the same direction, and guess what? It actually worked beautifully. The thing I had to do was, if I just go into uh, the scripts folder, enter the dungeon gener dungeon display, this one here. Let's just load that up one second. Yeah, so here we are in the uh, dungeon display script, and the thing I things I had to change were these uh, this this value here, 12, because obviously the scale of our tunnels was much much bigger. I can't help but feel that maybe I should have that in some sort of variable, but it's it's working for now. Uh, and indeed, for the um, for the for, this is actually for the shapes themselves as well. They need to be 12. In fact, this is the room object. So at the moment, this hasn't even been uh, modelled. But I to keep the spacing correct, I moved that by 12, and then I had to go to the room here and scale it up by 444 there you go you see that there yeah 444 all right and then literally out of the box it worked I, I was because I'd taken the time to be quite cautious about adding the uh, getting the angles and, and what have you right uh, I was able to do it pretty quick so if I just click on one of these just press F you can see there's a one of our tunnels there this is all very white in fact I had to add a, a, a material uh, to all of these I think all of these have a room material at the bottom Where's the material? There's definitely a material on there. Corner two, where are you? Test, test shader it must have been. Then I must have it somewhere else. Where's the test? Models maybe? Test, there we go. So I just created a test material just to get me started. Um, let's just change the colour of that for a laugh, shall we? There we go, we can change the colour. There we go, look at that. Um, actually, that might be useful. Let's just do. Let's just try something like that. And that is it. So it just creates the tunnels as it did before, but now rather than using the cube, it uses our models that uh, that we we we, we uh, sculpted in Blender. So good news. Obviously, they still need to be properly textured, but at least now with our um, with our colliders added and um, models defined, we can we can actually start to traverse it. So let's do that now. So what I'll do is I'll stop this. What I might actually do. Shall I delete these? Oh, look at that. I didn't know you could do that. You select them all. That's nice, isn't it? That's a very useful feature. Um, shall I delete them all? No, I won't delete them all. They are noise because we've got these guys now. Uh, but we'll, I'll keep them in there for now. I hope that doesn't get too disturbing. Like I say, I'll keep the Unity package for you guys to look at. Um, so let's create a uh, first-person character that can traverse this maze. So what we'll do is we'll just go into Assets here. Right-click. Import Package. Characters. Now I've done this before. Uh, I, I tend to delete them for the uh, for the export package because they just, some of this stuff is very very large. In fact, what I have I have not quite cracked uh, which scripts are relevant um, because a lot, I, I I just tried um, including the first person character and it didn't work. So what I found the best thing to do is do everything but unselect. So if I just get rid of you a second, so. So the rollerball and third person character can go. All right, we don't need those ones, but keep everything else. And there's definitely stuff here we don't need, at least physics materials and things. But that's the, the, I think these two are the biggest anyway. So if we can get rid of those, so get so effectively, you know, I mean, just import all of it if you like. But um, but these two aren't needed. Rollerball and third person character. So let's just click import now. Should be pretty quick. Okay, and what we can do under our Standard assets, uh, characters. We'll have a first-person character under the prefabs. First-person controller. Drag it in. Now this would work beautifully. We'll just need to reset its values here. Um, I just need to remind myself. If I click play now, I suspect he's going to just disappear through the world. Indeed, he is. Just press escape. So if we just have a look at the top left hand. Uh, now, is that top left or bottom right? I get confused myself. I 
think that might be top clicking on that yeah you see that's the first one that got created so this is here and we can look at its position look 12 0 12 so if we just uncheck that this is one of the problems because this is, is created at runtime where do you position your first person controller well let's just try 12 0 12 all right and obviously if I say there's nothing there this first person controller has its own camera so let's just disable this one for now and if I click play now we're in the tunnels guys and I can use W S to go backwards and forwards and A and D to go left and right uh, to strafe I should say left and right and I can look around these tunnels and here we go we are traversing them if I just quickly just click on that and then click back in we can see where we're going on the top now this is completely untraversable at the moment it's very difficult actually red is better than the white that I had um, but it is definitely working isn't it we can see that we're able to wander around pointlessly this would be extremely hard to navigate extremely hard so I think we need to find a way to make this more uh, friendly from a map perspective let's go out let's fall out of the sky so where are we here we go I need to fill those I need to fill those ends in don't I I have been avoiding this but here we go if I fall out ready goodbye and I can look up and see my maze disappear <laughs> that, that satisfies me right um okay so that's working really really well so I think now for now we can actually say that's a done deal um, I need to work on those end bits but in the next in the next tutorial we will texture the uh, tunnels to make them a lot more appealing I think going forward then as I mentioned if I just can quickly show you one more time um, this maze is not going to be achievable uh, I don't think without um, some form of uh, maze display that the user can look at here we go, let's just keep going down look, uh, to see whereabouts they are and to, see, to check their progress. So I think I'll work on some sort of logic that perhaps puts a little map up. Um, we can't go into that room yet, that's something else we need to model out, isn't it? And we'll do that very, very shortly. But in the next tutorial, what I'll be doing is I'll be texturing this stuff. So stay tuned, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Apologies this didn't make it into the previous video. It's, I thought it would be more uh, long-winded and tough, turns out it was a piece of cake. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll stop there and look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks now, bye-bye.